In this episode, we're brewing a smash ale, four-way, split batch by separating a single batch of wort into four different fermenters and then pitching four different yeasts. We're then going to taste them side by side to see how much of an impact just the yeast has on the finished beer. Like the first time I ever had the same wort fermented with different yeast was here. It kind of blew my mind because I was like, it shows how much the yeast plays such a big role. And we're joined here by a very special guest to make sure we don't screw up this beer. So uh, I've been home brewing for about nine years. I've been in the beer industry for eight years. Uh, I am a BJCP certified beer judge. I'm also a certified Cicerone. And you may have seen me around town doing uh, some brewery tours here and there. So as you know, as you, as Joe's very smart, Joe's very smart. I'm just wearing a lab coat and goggles to make myself look smart, but I'm also beautiful. <laughs> White Labs, what do you guys do? Well, uh, White Labs, we grow uh, the highest quality liquid yeast in the world for you know breweries, for you know people making cider or wine or even spirits. Are you gonna do the water cam now? Yeah, maybe as well. We got time. My son came in one time and I was measuring out my salt. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I know you used to follow the dead, Mom. But... <laughs> Where'd you learn how to do this, son? <laughs> Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? And uh, we just did like a balanced yellow profile. Mm -hmm. you, look like, you look kind of scientific. <laughs> yeah. uh, do I look as smart as uh, Farnsworth? Farnsworth, he's from Futurama. If there's if there's ever a, a Mount Rushmore of science, I'm on it. Yeah, you you got you got your Farnsworth, you got your you Doc got, Doc you got Tesla, Doc Emmett Brown. Yeah. Oh, how about uh, Breaking Bad? Walter White. You know what we should do too? What? Probably take the yeast out, right? Yeah, we could take it out. Okay. Yeah. So what would you bring us here? All right, so I brought you guys uh, our good old WLP001, California Ale Yeast. That's one I'm very familiar with. I use that a lot. Totally, yeah. This is our you know, White Labs original strain. So 1995, we started growing this yeast and it is definitely a workhorse. It can be used to make a wide variety of styles of beer from IPAs, pale ales, porters. Why did White Labs want to do a collaboration with Clawhammer? <laughs> um, well... We're just using all um, Maris Otter, so... We looked at your YouTube channel and was like, these guys are super fun, they're super engaging. Kyle, you got a good angle here? Um, yeah. You look, you look beautiful. Thanks, man. Ooh. It's not awkward at all. No. <laughs> Just get it in the kit. Yeah, you want me to help? They have a really cool product. Like your equipment is just, I think it's baller. It's fantastic, you know? Mm. It's like one of my favorite smells. Same. So it's just like, it just seemed kind of a natural fit. Like it'd be really fun to do something with you guys. What are some of your other favorite smells? Mine? Yeah. Uh, do in the morning. I really like that. When you get up at like, you know, five or six to go on that morning run. And after that, the smell of chai tea before my yoga class. Oh, do you got any? Oh, my favorite smell is a uh, campfire. Wood smoke. Oh. Wood smoke. That is nice. I mean, I probably started homebrewing in what, 2002 or three, I'm guessing. I mean, there's definitely a yeast selection, but it's not like it is today. You just go to a homebrew store and, you know, you'd pick one of the few yeasts that, that they had. I also brought you guys WLP 066, London Fog Ale Yeast. But now it's great. You walk in and most local homebrew shops have, you know, a ton of variety. You walk in the actual homebrew supply. I mean, they can pretty much have every use you want from White Labs in there, which is really cool. So this is definitely for that kind of, you know, the New England style yeah. hazy IPAs. That's that's what you want for this. So it's a low flocculator. It's going to leave a nice kind of hazy beer. 60 minute mash is done. Do you want to do a mash out? Because we did not do one. You a fan of a mash out? Sure. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna do a mash out. We typically don't do a mash out. 
We want to try and make ourselves look good for, yep. for Joe yes. and White Labs. Joe's here. I want to do it right. Well, yeah, We're, we got accountability today. Joe's very smart. Do you have any um, professional credentials as far as, you know, like drinking and serving and whatnot goes? Um, I think I bartended for half a night in my early 20s. You think? I, I Yeah, I don't think I finished the shift. Are you good at drinking beer? Mm, subjective. Not the best, but I don't know. Bartenders would probably disagree. So we don't brew a ton of 10 gallon batches and we haven't installed, we have a pulley. We had one installed in our old office. Uh, we just haven't installed it yet. So we're just gonna have to manhandle this out. Um, and then can you tip your hat up just so you don't look like you're in um, some, some sort of witness protection program? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. look like, what's that movie, like The Invisible Man? Okay. Heck yeah, perfect. Oh, nailed it. Cool. And then, yeah, I figured might as well just do a little squeeze. Yeah. Can you show me your squeeze technology? It's a lid. It's a lid. Mm. Can White Labs tell us if we have, we're squeezing tannins out? Yeah, um, I was just actually thinking about that. I'm like, I'm wondering if you are in fact doing that. Like that, maybe you're gonna get some astringency that, that's, from doing that. That's this? what uh, that's what people claim, but yeah. So on the follow-up video, I thought it'd be really fun to take uh, our beer after it's been fermented out and send some samples to our analytical lab, which is out in San Diego, and kind of get some data, get some stats. Are you worried at all? I don't think so. So if we get a little bit more beer, we get a little more beer, which is good. I probably should be a little nervous, but uh, you know, I'm just gonna blame it on Joe. Oh, we're good. I feel terrible. Oh God. Oh, sorry. We're just gonna heavy. put it all over the floor. No, it was just dripping. That's how, that's how I got hired originally. <laughs> Kyle, just to, to set a mop, mop out. The brew house. So we got four ounces of Zula hops. According to Wikipedia, they're from Poland. Fruity, citrusy, and yummy, I believe, were the descriptors. <laughs> they weren't on Wikipedia. I don't know. <laughs> I was, oh, Kyle, Kyle's Wikipedia. <laughs> okay. No, that was from their, their manufacturer's website. Which okay. Is, uh, I've never heard of them. I'm excited. I always like trying new hops. So we're gonna do four ounces at 60 minutes. Boom. Chakalaka. And then I'm just gonna set the timer for 60. That's the only hop edition until we do a Whirlpool later on. Perfect. We'll do a flame on a Whirlpool. Then I also have a WLP 518, which is our Opshog Kvayak ale yeast, which is super cool. Um, we got this from our friend uh, Lars, Lars Garshall. Right, Lars blog. We isolated this from a mixed culture that he got from a Norwegian farmhouse brewer called Harold Opshog. So it was kind of used in the early 1990s to make these Korndal style beers, which are like these really cool Norwegian farmhouse yeah. style beers. 60 minute boil's done. So let's kill the heat. So two ounces of Zula. Yes. And then uh, probably get our cooling water hooked up, chill it down to like 170 and we'll pull there for a little bit. Sounds like a plan that you're just making up yep. as you go. Totally. <laughs> That's how I do. Do you mind screwing that in there? Mm -hmm. If you want to turn on the cooling water, we'll start chilling her down. Just want you to know, Joe, that this is how it goes all the time. <laughs> we never make messes. I fully believe it. Never. <laughs> never spill a drop. Yeah, I mean, we don't do terrible. It's messy. It's I mean, messy. It's just like it's in just a living room, <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're going to whirlpool at 180.3 exactly. Four grams.
Bucket scientist, whoa! Ah. And then finally, our WLP 644 SAC Brux Trois. So this is kind of a wild, but it has like this really awesome tropical note uh, qualities to it. So really like a lot of pineapple, papaya, and these kind of guava uh, notes to it, which people really, really, really yeah. like. Nice work. Nice work. We're almost there. Almost there. Not a bad day. It's really not for January 19. So when I do a beer tasting, the first thing I do is, you know, look at the beer. Just kind of take a look at it, take a note of the color, take a look at the foam quality, um, color of the bubbles even, and density of the bubbles. So then what we're gonna do is kind of give it a nice smell. So give it a, uh, I like to do like a little drive-by first. Oh, drive-by. Like, yeah, a little drive-by just to kind of wake up the brain a little bit and kind of figure out what it is you're gonna smell. Um, and then I like to really get on in there and cover it and inhale deeply and pick up all of the aromas. And then of course, go ahead and take a sip right after that. If you can, exhale as you are sipping. So take a sip, swallow, and then exhale through your nose. So swallow and then out the nose. Yeah, your nasal passageways has all these receptors. They're actually like flavor receptors. Aroma and flavors are all kind of tied in there. Mm, I see what you're saying there. As far as like the flavor of this first beer, which uh, we fermented with the uh, WLP001, our California ale yeast, it's, it's really balanced. I think it's really nice. It's got like this crispy kind of malt character to it. It's definitely dry for sure. Yeah. It's definitely dry. I mean, it, it's pretty crushable, yeah, I gotta that's, say. That's, that's gonna be what I was gonna. <laughs> yeah, so moving on to our second beer. Okay. So I'm gonna do a drive-by. Do a drive-by. I don't know about you, but I'm picking up a, like a lot of really nice tropical-y kind of almost some pear, tart cherry or pear, some kind of fruity. Yeah. Right? It's oh. so different. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> it is crazy how different. Yeah. And I mean, I've done it before, but it's still kind of like wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that either. That was very unexpected. The, the uh, body on that seems a lot different. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, so far, this one is my favorite. Yeah. Um, so far, but we still have two more to go. Yeah, I want to see what you think of this one. It's very similar to this tropical one. I'm getting a lot of tropical notes, like some papaya and guava. This is nice. It's, it's great. No, it's great. I would not be disappointed with this beer. And then... So last one. This one is even fruitier. I, I, I want to... <laughs> Maybe it's because it's warming up a That's little bit. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Maybe it was this one that was cherry-like. This one definitely is getting some cherry. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. I'm not good at words when I taste. <laughs> I'm like, it tastes like beer, but then someone says cherry, I'm like, oh yeah, that's there. They're all really delicious. They're all a little different, and that's all yeast driven, which right. is super cool. Which is wild. You know? They're all fermented, same temperature, same duration. Which one would you say is your overall favorite for any and all reasons? Let me do one last okay. run through, do a couple more drive-bys. Perfect. Similar. Okay. I'm, I'm, this is my favorite. Which is that? 644. Is that the last one? Yep. It's I like, think I'm going to stick with this. Are you? But I think I enjoy just kind of that little bit of fruitiness, well, quite a bit of fruitiness mm -hmm. that the uh, London Fog's bringing out, bringing to the party in my mouth. Yeah. 
Well, this was a great project. One word, four different yeast strains, and amazingly different results. There's going to be a few more videos. You're going to want to check out White Lab's YouTube channel. They're going to get into the kind of nerdy scientific stuff on this beer, and it's going to be really interesting. And then we're probably going to flip back and do a little bit more on our channel. Go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button. All right. All right, all right, all right.